Welcome to an overview of the safety analysis of rural offset T intersections presented by PennDOT, the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation. In this video, you will learn the application of Highway Safety Manual, or HSM, predictive methods for assessments of existing offset rural T intersections and typical alternatives for improvements, such as creation of a three lane section or realignment into a single intersection. The analysis involves multiple tools rather than a typical use of PennDOT's HSM A and B tools. Offset T intersections are common in rural Pennsylvania where roads are often not laid out in a grid. As population and traffic volume grow, safety issues can sometimes develop at these locations. Common improvements include adding left turn lanes on the major street and creating a three lane section between the intersections realigning the minor roads into a single four-leg intersection with a traffic signal, realigning the minor roads into a single four-leg intersection with a roundabout. Let's learn about how to perform a safety analysis of these alternatives. The example used in this video is along Carlisle Pike, or PA-94, in Adams County between Berlin Road and Pine Run Road. PA-94 had a two-lane cross-section with no median. Berlin Road and Pine Run Road intersect PA-94 390 feet apart from one another. Both are minor stop-controlled intersections with no dedicated turn lanes. We have gathered traffic data as well as crash data for the last five years for the existing condition. Let's begin the analysis. First, analyze the existing condition with the PennDOT HSM A tool. The PennDOT HSM tools are available on PennDOT's website. Make sure you select the most recent tool by checking the last updated date. Let's see what needs to be done before the analysis. Open the PennDOT HSM Tool A and click on the toolbox. Input existing condition data into the tool, then select the facility type. In this case, it's a rural two-lane, two-way road. Since we want to use PennDOT's regionalized SPFs, you should select County Model. We have two intersections and no segments. The segment in between is short enough that you don't need to analyze it. Crashes on the segment are generally going to be assigned to one intersection or the other. If the segment was longer than 500 feet, then it would need to be analyzed as well. We want to estimate both predicted and expected number of crashes, and we have the observed crash data by site. Next, you need to input the intersection information. Since we are analyzing unsignalized stop-controlled intersections, we select 3ST type. Enter historical crash data at the bottom and go to the next intersection. Repeat the procedure for the second intersection. Select Next and click on Create Report. The detailed report will tell you the total number of predicted, observed, and expected crashes, and also a PSI, or Potential for Safety Improvement. How do we analyze these alternatives? Adding left turn lanes on the major street at each intersection and a two-way left turn lane in between the intersections is straightforward and can be analyzed with the HSM B tool. Realigning the minor roads to create a single intersection with a traffic signal or a roundabout is a scenario not well accommodated within the B tool. Furthermore, CMFs for this change are not currently available in the clearinghouse. There are other options for analyzing these alternatives, and the option depicted in this video is to use the Part C predictive method for the traffic signal and roundabout alternatives. Use the B tool to analyze the addition of major street left turn lanes at each intersection, and a two-way left turn lane in between the intersections. Open PennDOT HSM Tool B to do the safety analysis for a future condition with left turn lanes. To begin, Select the toolbox and fill out the general analysis options. Tool B can be used for up to three alternatives, but here we use this tool to examine alternative one only. Select No for the economic analysis, as we will be using the FHWA BCA tool. Tool B allows you to import information from the existing condition from Tool A. Select your Tool A file. Click on Alternative Analysis and select Alternative 1. For each intersection, we choose 1 as the number of left turn lanes on the major road. We should also include information regarding CMFs. Use the drop-down menu for the additional countermeasure and select 
add two-way left turn lane to major approach. Repeat the procedure for the second intersection. Hit next and then the analysis results will be provided. As you can see, there will be a decrease in crashes of all severity levels following the implementation of the left turn lanes. Use a new tool A to analyze the traffic signal. Follow the same steps as in the before condition example in using the A tool. For the future condition analysis, we would need a CMF. However, there is no relevant CMF available for converting an offset T intersection to a signalized intersection. Note that the CMF Clearinghouse is always updated and there could be new ones not shown in this video. In this case, we need to use a second SPF for the future condition. So we treat this as an existing project and run another A tool. In this method, we have one intersection only. The eastbound condition would not be applicable for the future condition because the facility type has changed and the crash data is not representative of the new geometry. On the Intersection Inputs tab, we select 4SG Intersection Type. We are assuming that the future signalized intersection would have left turn lanes on the major road. Select Next and create the report. While crash modification factors are often used to analyze roundabouts, there are also Safety Performance Functions or SPFs available. The SPFs are from NCHRP Report 888 and have been calibrated for Pennsylvania. A spreadsheet for applying these SPFs is available from Central Office. For our case study, we choose the Rural Intersection Model. Input the number of legs and the major and minor streets AADT. Since the roundabout is a future condition rather than an existing one, we leave the crash count and the number of years for crash count blank. Later, we will do a benefit cost analysis using the SPF predicted crash data. The results of the existing and future conditions analysis are summarized in this table. We determine crash reductions by subtracting the predicted number of crashes for each alternative from the expected number of crashes for the existing condition. Because multiple tools were used for crash prediction on each alternative, another tool is needed for benefit cost analysis. For this purpose, download the FHWA BCA tool from the PennDOT Safety webpage. Fill in the green cells at the top of the spreadsheet with the project's details. This spreadsheet has to be saved once for each alternative. The user can override the default settings for the blue cells. Choose the appropriate facility type. In this example, Rural Principal Arterial. 20 years is considered for the analysis period and 2 years for the construction period. The peak hour volume and segment length are provided. For each year of the study period, the project cost, which includes right-of-way, construction, maintenance, and other expenditures, should be supplied. Next, enter project crash data. Select Single Countermeasure because for every alternative, we used separate tools, and now enter their outputs into the BCA tool. The number of crashes per year should be supplied by the CABCO severity scale. Keep the CMF fields empty. Instead, insert in the following table the user-determined crash reduction. Tool A and B do not provide crash predictions for the five CABCO severity levels. You need to take the total crashes from tool A and B and apply the crash severity factors from publication 638A to get the CABCO breakdown. No need to change the analysis parameters unless you want to override the cost, emission, or delay factors. The results tab shows itemized benefits, costs, and benefit to cost ratios. Follow the same steps for every alternative in using BCA tool. The table here shows the net present value and benefit to cost ratio of the three future alternatives. BCR is an appropriate measure to achieve the most efficient project. The BCR is greater than 1.0 and positive NPVs indicate that improvements are economically justified for all potential alternatives. Alternative 1, or the left turns alternative, is the most cost effective alternative. This alternative is what PennDOT selected and implemented at this location, as shown in the image on the right. Thank you for joining us to learn about the analysis of rural offset T intersections. For questions, contact Jason Hershock, Manager of the Safety Engineering and Risk Management Unit.